I'm coming to you from this very cold beginning of 2014 day as I uh, use the boats that are all shrink-wrapped shrink and, and stored away for the winter as my backdrop to discuss uh, what went on last year with the uh, trans Severn Waterway navigation season and all the problems. So what I'm going to do is just present this little video, consider it as an open letter to uh, everybody concerned, boaters, business people, Parks Canada in particular, lock staff and everybody else that was affected by the uh, big changes and the uh, negative things that happened last season as a result of uh, the schedule uh, changes and everything else that went on. Um, I just want to say as part of the overview please don't take this as a negative comment on the Trent Severn Waterway. Uh, we've been boating on the system for 11, 12 seasons now and uh, keep our boat in the heart of the Trent Severn Waterway and we love it absolutely. It's just so unfortunate that what we saw going on last year and there was a lot of people that were frankly pissed off with the situation so I'm hoping that while these boats are sitting here that uh, maybe people can ponder and hopefully put into action some uh, changes that will be beneficial for next year's season. Now the reason that I'm doing this video is real simple because uh, I've said it before, the root cause of the severe unthought through cutbacks that we had last year in the 2013 season, I strongly believe is as a result of the bureaucrats in Ottawa probably have very little feel for the Trent Severn Waterway the uh, Rideau Canal and the other heritage canals that we have in Canada that have been affected. And I wanted to present, first of all, the beauty, the grandeur, and the awesomeness of the Trans Severn Waterway and try to put that across the best way that I know how through uh, my words to a lesser extent and of course by a greater extent at uh, some of these beautiful video clips that uh, we have been able to capture over the years of boating on the system. As many of you know who uh, are regular uh, followers of my YouTube channel, I love nothing more than to share these uh, beautiful images with you and just let everybody know how gorgeous it is and what a fantastic resource that we have. So it is my hope that beyond the people who uh, are already aware of the Trent Severn Waterway, um, that the uh, folks at Parks Canada who make the decisions are able to sit down, look at this impartially, not as a federal government bureaucrat, but you know what folks, open your eyes. It's a beautiful, beautiful resource and I would hate to see it squandered as a result of bureaucratic bungling. You've probably heard me say this before, but I just got to put this out there once again. I really, really believe that if the people who are in charge of making the decisions on the Trent Severn Waterway, the Rideau Canal and the other heritage sites were to get on a boat and actually travel through the system, any one of the systems as a user and get that full user experience, they would be blown away by the beauty, the the the, the travel wonderment by itself and as well get a real clear handle on what is going on and what it takes to to pilot a boat through as well as what the staff lock staff have to deal with and what see what a great job that they are doing in general as well as visit the marinas visit the small towns talk to community leaders and see what their take is on as far as the importance of, of these waterways.
you know, during our uh, travels through the uh, Trans Severn Waterway in the 2013 season, I made a point of trying to talk to as many boaters, lock staff, and business owners as, as we came across. And everybody came back with the same thing. Traffic was right, way down. There weren't as many boats on the system traveling through. Um, the business owners were complaining that their businesses were down across the board. I heard this from everybody. 25 to 30 percent was the average. The impact of the cutbacks has hurt everybody. Let's take it at the most basic level. The boaters who obviously are the backbone of the system, the only reason that, that the Trent Severn Waterway and the Rideau Canal still exists today is for pleasure boats. These same boaters, us included, were frustrated by the point that the hours of travel were, were knocked back considerably. The uh, posted opening and closing times were an hour later in the morning, an hour earlier at night throughout the season. But in actual practice, and anybody can back this up, the locks weren't actually operating. They weren't going and locking boats through till probably a half an hour to an hour beyond their stated opening time. And the same thing, closing time, they all closed a half an hour before their stated closing time. You know, I have to keep coming back to this. I don't know where the beans were counted by uh, Parks Canada, where, uh, where they did all the math on this. But seriously, if, if they were to look at how much money their cost savings were supposed to be by cutting back staff at a number of the locks as well as reducing the hours and put that against the revenue that was clearly lost because of taxes and service fees throughout the season, I'm almost positive that they will say it didn't work. It's craziness. Not only does it not work, but it's going to create problems down the road insofar as as more and more boaters hear about this, Americans that are doing the Great Loop, boaters that are getting frustrated. I've heard boaters directly say to me, you know, we're, we're, this is crazy, we're frustrated, we're fed up with it, we're going to move our boat to Georgia May uh, for next summer. So again, what kind of revenue uh, reflection is that going to be to Parks Canada and the federal government's bottom line? Here's a, a quick story while we were sitting await at the swing bridge at Bolsover for the roving lock crews to come and lock us through. Just uh, hear what um, one of the stories that we were told by uh, one of the businesses and how much revenue that the federal government has lost as a result of business being down. Okay, we are waiting at uh, the east side of the swing bridge at Bolsover. And this is a perfect example of Parks Canada um, mishandling of the situation. We've been waiting here for about 20 minutes. Now, thankfully, there is uh, there's a bit of breeze, but there's no like strong breeze or real heavy duty current. And so far, there's no other boats to uh, create congestion. But the problem is that this swing bridge is now operated by the mobile roving crews of the locks up in this area. And they have just, you know, recently locked through a number of boats heading downstream. So that means while they are attending to that, because they have to leave the next lock and go to the next lock and the next lock to service it before they can send somebody back to swing the bridge. And I know I talked about this in the spring when this was all uh, being announced, how this could be potentially a dangerous situation, especially when, you know, if it's getting towards the end of the day, and, you know, if it's bad weather or something, what do you do? There's really nowhere to tie up. There's a marina behind us. There's an abandoned one over there, but I don't know how safe that would be to even get in. Um, 
so and this is where again tempers would flare and everything else now i just want to throw in this little bit tidbit of information we've been traveling along uh, the system extensively and talking to all the business owners that we come up against and i got lots of stories to tell about their insights but one that uh, we didn't hear too long ago was up from a marine operator who said that just the hst that he's col normally collects for this time of the year on gas sales and whatever else dockage and whatnot it's apparently down upwards of thirty thousand dollars so the federal government has lost that revenue because of a lack of business going through because of the reduced hours but they think they're saving money because there's no one here to swing the bridge I don't know what a Park Canada employee makes but I'm sure it's not thirty thousand dollars for just for the summer Anyways, that's that. So here we are, going on 25 minutes, still waiting. And, and the wind uh, is picking up yeah, and right. throwing us around now. Yeah, well now <laughs> we're spinning, so now i got to be a little bit more creative. So I'll get back to you. So where's all the money being lost? Uh, loss in fuel revenue because obviously if there's 30 le 30 percent less boats going through or doing 30 percent less traveling they're not going to be buying as much fuel L uh, fewer lock fees because again not as many boats going through locking through who wants to buy a season's pass if they know they're not going to get the benefit out of it uh, mooring fees food and accommodation to the local municipally run marinas uh, the tie-up walls that Parks Canada controls and collects the revenues from, or sorry, the fees, as well as uh, any number of the uh, many, many small marinas, which, of course, rely on the traveling boaters. They, Of course, they have their local small boat, but again, you have to remember, many of the small boats on the smaller, smaller lakes, they travel between the lakes via the locks because they want to go shopping or they want to buy, just take the kids out for an ice cream, go out for a meal somewhere. And, of course, all that revenue is being cut back severely because there simply aren't the same amount of boats going through, or at least there wasn't in 2013. You know, it's another funny thing to consider that uh, our lock systems, the trans Waterway and the uh, Rideau Canal specifically, are designated as National Historic Sites. Um, what does that mean? It means they are going to be preserved in a historic state, I'm guessing. But also, doesn't that mean it's a, it's a cultural heritage that should be protected? And I'm not talking about fixing you know a crumbling lock wall or something on the contrary uh, for the most part the system is in pretty good shape but it has to be it has to be protected in so far as if it's going to crumble simply because people are losing interest in it namely the government uh, secondly the boaters and the people who have relied on the system then that whole infrastructure will eventually break down and it will become just a shadow of what it what it was which would be very very sad very very uh, sad you know for the most part the trend seven waterway is such a great treasure such a beautiful area to to travel through However, there are a few areas of concern simply because of lack of maintenance. I'm not talking about the locks themselves. Uh, I can't think of a lock that has an issue for safety or, or usability and functionality. The mechanics there all seem to work well. The only problem with those are staff issues in so far as cutbacks. Uh, however, there are some stretches along the trans Waterway that are becoming um, if not impassable, downright dangerous to go through. Uh, one that you're looking at here right now is the Kirkfield Cut. 
Now the Kirkfield cut uh, runs between Balsam Lake and the Kirkfield lift lock and this is a long man-made cut that was dug out of the rocks back in the early 1900s and um, by my estimation they haven't trimmed the trees since 1907 when the Kirkfield lift lock came, uh, became operational. Um, just look at this yourself. It would be virtually impossible for two you know, medium to larger size boats to safely pass one another. We have been in uh, smaller boats in years past traveling through this very stretch and have had larger boats approaching us and stop dead in their tracks and not only that, try to back up because they were <coughs> they were shocked and horrified to see what was going on and like, oh my god, how are we going to get through? There's a boat coming towards us and I would stop them from what they were doing by going on the radio and waving my hands and saying, come on, we can do this, let's work this out because otherwise one of us is going to have to back up by many, many miles which was just not going to be workable because of course now you have traffic coming up behind you. So if uh, Parks Canada could look into just these issues, and again it comes back to the point that I was making earlier where if some of the bureaucrats, some of the leaders, some of the managers actually got on a boat and did the trip as a user experience. Um, like I say, it's phenomenal to see it, what's going on and uh, trust me, it would be downright scary uh, in some of the places that you would travel through to see something like this as a first time user or a first um, somebody who's not a boater who would not want know what to do. You know, this is not something that we should be fighting about. This is not something that we should be arguing about. The Trent Severn Waterway, the Rideau Canal, all the other heritage sites, or sorry, the other heritage canals, these are treasures. They're, they're beautiful. Look at this video that I'm showing you. Oh my God. Where else in the world can you do this, travel through such beautiful country, and be able to access from anywhere on the system, literally anywhere else in the world that is approachable by boat. We have access to the Atlantic Ocean from two different routes from here. This is all within 90 minutes travel time of the largest city in Canada. We have access to what has been rated as the best freshwater boating grounds in the world in Georgian Bay. We have access to one end, from one end to the other of the Trent Severn Waterway. Again, every lock, and we're blessed to have 44 locks on the system that we can travel through and, and stay at any one of them and, and have a mini vacation. We do it ourselves. We shouldn't be arguing about this, folks. We should be working together. We should be working towards a common goal. We should be promoting this. I myself personally have been promoting this since 2006. I've had, I have a website going. Put the word out there. I started the website back then because when we, shortly after we uh, started traveling and traveling, venturing farther and farther, there was very little information available on the Trans Severn Waterway back on the interweb of the day in the mid 2000s so I was compelled to say you know what we're we're traveling we're enjoying I'm taking pictures I can tell a few stories and hopefully draw other people into it I've been sharing my videos on YouTube I've been writing about it online I've been spreading the joy uh, to share the wonderment and the beauty this is what we should be doing this is what the, the federal government should be doing how can we as a government the curators of this promote it and and share it look at it it's beautiful it's gorgeous you don't even need a boat you can travel to almost every one of these locks by car you can see the wonderment you can see the beauty you can see the access you can watch the boats you can talk to the people you can have a barbecue you can enjoy a summer day this is all within 90 minutes travel time of the largest city in canada and one of the largest in north america
you know, it's ironic that the Rideau Canal, which was built to defend the government of Canada of the day, before Canada was even a country, uh, it was built as a defensive measure against the, uh, the, the potential of invading American armies after uh, the War of 1812. And now that very same rampart of defense is under attack by the very government that it was built to defend. Don't squander it, boys. Let's, let's not ruin something as good as this that we have. Let's work together. Again, I started this video off by saying this is an open letter to everybody, uh, especially the government. If you at Parks Canada have any ideas, suggestions, you want to throw out some you know, feeler ideas, contact me. Boom, through YouTube. Boom, through Facebook. Let's talk. Let's, let's get this out here. Let's get it working. Let's figure something out and uh, look forward to a, a better season in 2014. I know I am. We are going to have our own seasons pass, our seasons mooring pass as well, and we're going to take advantage of this uh, beautiful, beautiful waterway. I will continue to keep promoting it just because it's, it's so beautiful and gorgeous, and I want to inspire others to enjoy it as much as they can. Heck, maybe somebody might watch this and say, you know what? Honey, let's buy a little boat and start traveling the Trent Severn Waterway. That's what we did, and here we are today. Gorgeous, love it, beautiful, and uh, like I say, I hope we can work towards a, a positive, positive, common goal.